All right, we're back and we're gonna do the lab five generalization assignments. There's five different problems. And uh, just as a reminder, we're doing the sampling distribution section right now. So I've, let's flip over to our studio. I've already set up a lab five R markdown document. I'm working in my stats lab project folder and I've got the five different problems copied in here. I haven't pressed knit yet. I just want to see that all this stuff is here. Great. Now I'm going to go and work on the problems. So let's talk about the first problem. It's a trust but verify problem. This is a, something you want to do when you're working with simulations. So we trust that the R norm function generates numbers like it is supposed to. And we're going to test this out. So we're going to um, try to figure out uh, something that we learned in lab in the lab. First of all, um, we learned that a normal distribution with mean zero standard deviation one should produce uh, values larger than 2.5 with a specific probability. And we found that to be 0 0.00620966 I believe we would use the P norm there. And so we're saying 2.5 mean equals zero, SD equals one, and um, lower tail equals false. So that's where we're getting that number from. Now, what we want to do is sample one million numbers from this distribution. So I'm going to make that happen right now. One, zero, 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 zero. So that's one million. And the mean is zero. And the standard deviation is one. Let's do it. All right, we've got a large numeric vector. It's eight megabytes big. And we've got a million numbers in there. They're all sampled from the distribution. So I want to verify that Point zero zero six two so on percent of those numbers are actually greater than 2.5 and not some different percentage. So to do that, I'm going to use logical indexing and say how many numbers are larger than 2.5. So this is going to select all the numbers from the million that are larger than 2.5. And I'm just going to call this selection. So there's 6,355 numbers that are larger than 2.5. So if we divide this by, one, um, sorry, first we want to find the, the length of selection, which is uh, going to be 6,355. And we're going to divide that by 1 million. Just want to make sure these are the same values right here. So that was a million. This is a million. And we're going to calculate that out to be 0 0.006355. And that's pretty close to 0 0.0062. And uh, so I'm going to say we, uh, we verified uh, that the R norm function produces numbers like it suggests it will. All right, let's move on to question number two. And this question, whoops, one second, I've got to adjust this microphone. Uh, all right, so if performance on a standardized test was known to follow a normal distribution with mean 100, standard deviation 10, and 10,000 people took the test, how many people would be expected to achieve a score higher than three standard deviations from the mean? So there's a lot of stuff to keep track of here. And we can um, figure this out in more than one way, but uh, let's do it both ways, I guess. So we have a normal distribution with mean 100 standard deviation 10 
and we have a particular score, um, three standard deviations from the mean. So that's uh, 100 plus 10, 10, and 10, so that's 130. So let's use the p-norm function. Sorry. And uh, use the quantile 130. So that's a three standard deviations from the mean, which is 100, and the standard deviation is 10. Okay. So if we did this, we're going to get a pretty big number, close to 1, but we're actually talking about the probability you'd get a value higher than 130. So we could set a lower tail equals false, and we get point zero zero one three four nine eight nine eight. So that's the probability. If we have 10,000 people, um, we expect that if we just multiply these things, thir roughly 13.49 of those people will have a score higher than three standard deviations from the mean. So there's one way to solve the problem. So the, the answer is 13.49898. We could conduct a simulation if we wanted. And one way to do that would just be to simply uh, select 10,000 people or 10,000 observations out of a distribution with mean 100 and standard deviation 10. And I'm going to call this some observations. And then we could say, well, how many of these are greater than 130? And we can see that there's a few there. We could take the length of this and divide it by the total number 10,000. And we get uh, a similar value. Not but this is um, going to be close, but not exactly right. Uh, we could improve on this simulation, potentially doing this several times um, to get a better version of this. And I'm going to, well, I'll come back to that. Or I'll leave that for you to, to, to attempt, actually. I'm just going to move on to the next question here. The main point here was to use the p-norm function to solve this one that doesn't require the simulation. Let's look at problem number three. So you randomly sample 25 numbers from a normal distribution with mean equals 10 and standard deviation 20. All right, I mean, I can just do that right now real fast. 10 and 20, great, so I did that. But okay, let's say you get a sample mean of 12. Okay, so I, I'm pretending I get a sample mean of 12. What this, in this example, I happen to get a sample mean of 6 or a sample mean of 7 or 15. Okay, okay I can get lots of different sample means with this setup. Okay, so I want to know, uh, let's say I got a 12. What's the probability that you could have received a sample mean of 12 or larger? All right. How can we figure this out? Well, we're going to we're asked to create a sampling distribution of the mean for this scenario with at least 10,000 sample means. So we want to do this 10,000 times. I'm going to create a variable called sampling distribution. And I'm going to use the replicate function 10,000 times uh, to do this operation. And I'm getting a little red square. Why is that? We need one more parenthesis just so we can see that. Okay, yeah. We're taking the mean of a sample from this normal distribution where the mean is 10, the standard deviation is 20, and the sample size is 25. 
or calculate the mean of our sample, and we'll do that 10,000 times. So we get a sampling distribution right here. We could look at our sampling distribution real quick if we wanted to, just to get a sense about it. This is very useful uh, because you can sort of get a gut check. So I can see that I could get means that are roughly within this range. This sampling distribution tells me that. Um, so we're not getting sample means of like a thousand or something. They're right around 10, which is of course the mean of the population distribution. Our question was, what's the probability you get a sample mean larger than 12? So I could see that 12 is going to be around here-ish. I'm talking about this area under the curve, or these things over here. And I could calculate the proportion of sample means that are 12 or larger from this distribution and answer my question. So I'm going to take sampling distribution, use my logical indexing to say which ones are larger than 12. Now these are the ones right there. There's a bunch of them. But I want to know how many there are. And there are 3,108. And I want to divide that by 10,000, which is how many samples I took. And so just real quick, I've got an answer here that is 0.31. So 31% of my sample means are going to be larger than 12 based off of this simulation. Let's go to question number four. You randomly sample 100 numbers from a normal distribution with mean equals 10 and standard deviation equals 20. Okay, you obtain a sample mean of 12. This is like the previous question. So you want to know the probability that you could have received a sample mean of 12 or larger. It's exactly the same as this before. So before the answer was 31%. Let's copy all of this because it's going to be the same. The only thing that's different is we're now taking 100 numbers for each sample and not 25. We're increasing the n, the sample size. So let's do that. Let's look at our histogram. So we see another histogram, but notice the uh, range here is a little bit smaller. Um, and let's calculate the probability now. And the probability now is 0.16. So this happens uh, less frequently with fewer probability, or sorry, with that lower probability. We've increased our sample size, and we've found that it becomes less likely that our sample mean is larger than 12 in this situation. And that's uh, an interesting observation. So one question is, why exactly that happens? Oops, what have I done? I've, have I... I think I accidentally, oh no, no, I'm, I was looking at question number three, sorry. Oh, sorry. Press play here and we get our point three one three nine. Yep, let's go down, sorry, I was getting confused. This is problem number four. Press play here and we get our point one six. Uh, so we, we see that we get a smaller pr probability the answer to the question, is the proportion different from question three, is yes, the proportion is lower than question three. Why, question mark, did this happen? Why is the proportion lower? Why, when we raised the sample size, did we get a smaller probability or proportion of getting a sample mean larger than 12? I will leave that with you to answer because that is a statistics concept question and not an R problem. Let's move on to question number five. So you randomly sample 25 numbers 
from the normal distribution with mean 10 standard deviation 20. Okay, fine. So it's like similar to what we've been doing. You obtain a sample standard deviation of 15. Okay. So that's different. Uh, we are now calculating the standard deviation of our sample and getting a 15. You want to know the probability you could have received a sample standard deviation of 15 or less. So this question is asking us to create a sampling distribution of standard deviations and calculate the proportion of sample standard deviations that are 15 or less. And I'll tell you right now that this is an important point. We don't have to create sampling distributions of means. We could create sampling distributions of anything we want. So this is similar to what we did uh, in question three. Let me just copy this and modify it. We want to create a sampling distribution when we sample 25 numbers from a normal distribution with mean 10, standard deviation 20. But instead of calculating the mean each time, we just want to calculate the standard deviation of the sample each time. So all I've done is change this to SD. Now we're creating a distribution of sample standard deviations. We can plot that if we wanted to. And we can see that usually the sample standard deviation is 20, just like the population it came from, but it changes, it's variable. We don't always get 20. And if we want to figure out the proportion of sample standard deviations that are 15 or less, we could change this to 15, less than 15, and it says 15 or less, so less than or equal to 15, and divided by 10,000, and we get this value here. Now let me just go check uh, 12 or larger. Yeah, I made a mistake, so it's going to be greater than or equal to 12. I'm going to do that again. And here, uh, 12 or larger, so greater than or equal to 12. So I think I didn't make any more mistakes. This one is higher than three standard deviations, not including. So I just use the greater than sign. And this one is the proportion of numbers that are larger than 2.5, not larger than or equal to 2.5. So I've just used the equal sign. All right, that is the solutions for lab five generalization problems. And we'll see you next week for lab six, where we begin talking about statistical inference.